Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly news update. My name is Walton Pantland and I'm joined today by Samantha Ritchie. Welcome Samantha. Hi. Today we're going to be talking about austerity in Greece and what it's doing to that society, about the rise of right to work legislation in the US, about links between the cooperative movement and trade unions, and about the ITU's attempts to control the internet. But first, let's get an update from Greece. Samantha, what's happening? Well, well what's happening is that austerity is still not working. The Greek's, Greek government's plan of reducing the deficit by 50% over the next five years is not working. One of the steps includes that making the public administration more efficient, but this is a contradiction in itself because they are still cutting staff in the public sector, which is decreasing efficiency in the public sector. The, the, they are cutting the public sector, continuously co causing talented members of staff to leave, which is having a negative effect on the Greek economy and the Greek workforce. Thanks, and I think what we're seeing in Greece is it's an experiment in how to dismantle a society using austerity. And one of the worst examples we've seen of, of that is the Greek arrest of women who are HIV positive. This happened in May this year when more than 100 people were, women were rounded up in Greece given involuntary HIV tests. 26 of them were found to be HIV positive. They were imprisoned and they are still in prison and uh, their identities were disclosed on the Greek police website and also on talk shows where they were vilified as being a health time bomb that needed to be eradicated. And for, for us, this is a really horrific example of uh, how human rights disappear with, with when austerity comes about. And we're really trying to raise the profile of the story and get people talking about it and uh, hopefully try to do something to change the situation. So we'd really encourage you to do what you can to, to let people know this number of articles about this on our website so please do share them. Um, really is terrible isn't it Sam? Awful, it's yeah. really terrible what's happening in the Greece just now, it's mm -hmm. really terrible. More bad news from the US this time. Right to work sounds like such a good thing doesn't it? But it's a particularly Orwellian turn of phrase from the US meaning the right to work without union protection. It's a union busting strategy originally designed to make poorer states particularly in the south more competitive by undermining union bargaining but it's creeping north and this week the state of Michigan voted to become a right to work state. Michigan, home of the US auto industry, is traditionally a strong union state so right to work is an assault on the labor union heartland. With the balance of power overwhelmingly in the, heart, in the hands of corporations, right to work is a further assault on workers rights. As American workers fight back we're likely to see more and more attempts to limit their power through legal means like this. So we really need to do whatever we can to support people and to stop those terrible policies spreading. What's happening with the ILO? Um, what's happening with the ILO is that um, there, the UN is calling on a paper to be produced by trade unions and cooperatives which highlight the benefits of having um, cooperatives and um, people can submit a paper on a range of areas which is um, cooperatives are generally marginal economic players and how can trade unions help them and um, what has been the role of unions in co-ops and what are the success successful models of this. The papers would really show what unions have been using the cooperative model and working with the cooperative movement to achieve economic, social and political objectives. So. Yeah, I think, I think that's really crucial because both the co-op movement and the trade union movement have been around for a long time. They were both reactions to the Industrial mm -hmm. Revolution and attempts to, to humanize it and make it work better. Mm -hmm. And they really need to work, work more closely together because they've got a lot in common. And uh, we're always told there is no alternative, but I think the co-op movement is a, is a very clear alternative. Um, the best example, if you don't know about it, of, of a successful co-op movement is Mondragon in Spain. It's the biggest corporation in the Basque region and it's one of the top 10 corporations in Spain. So it's a massive company. Um, it's composed of many co-ops grouped into four sectors, industry, finance, retail and knowledge. Um, and all major decisions are made at a general assembly of all workers, uh, where the workers elect their managing director. The managing director doesn't get paid more than 6.5 times what the lowest worker gets paid, which is uh, it's quite a difference from yeah say a corporation in the US where a CEO typically gets 400 times what the lower shop mm -hmm. floor worker gets paid and workers remain in control of, of uh, what, what gets produced by the co-op. Um, 
Gender equality and job security are high priorities because the co-op puts people first rather than, than profit. And uh, one of the things that, that's quite impressive about it is that they also massively fund research and development to the tune of, I think, uh, $75 million a year. They employ 800 people, all developing uh, good quality new products so that the co-op can, can develop and grow. So I think it's really important yeah. that unions work with co-ops and we, we build this movement as a genuine alternative to the capitalist model that we have at the moment and one that has proven to work. Um, you've been following the story of the, the ITU and the, the internet. What's happened there? Um, yeah, um, the ITU um, tried to um, put through a treaty um, at their conference, which means that the, regulate, uh, the internet was going to be regulated by governments across the world. Um, but fortunately, countries refused to sign the treaty, and the countries which refused were the US, UK, Canada, Costa Rica, Sweden, Egypt, Kenya, the Netherlands, Sweden, and Poland and Qatar. But countries who supported it involved United Arab Emirates, China, and Russia. The internet is a powerful tool, powerful tool and allows political activism to happen across the world and on various social media sites, so it's vital mm -hmm. that we keep that unregulated and allow freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. I think Sam's completely right. I mean, this is an attempt by the International Telecommunications Union to put the dead hand of bureaucracy on a, a vital communication mechanism. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it's been beaten off this time, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to remain vigilant because yep. people are going to keep trying to control the internet. Mm -hmm. um, that's all we have for you this week, and I think it's all we have for you this year. So uh, we'd like to wish you all the best for the season, and uh, can we make 2013 an excellent year for uh, worker solidarity and, and fighting together to resist austerity and to build an alternative. Yeah, definitely. Have a good year from everyone here.